we are talking about something that many of us rely on to stay awake every day. Caffeine. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Melissa. I'm a registered dietitian and here on my channel we talk about all things food and nutrition. So like I said today, we are talking about caffeine. Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? I feel like you hear both all the time. So let's take a look at the research that I found and we can kind of try to come to a conclusion about caffeine. So first of all, what is caffeine? Caffeine is a natural stimulant and it works by stimulating the brain and the central nervous system. So in the brain, it works by blocking the hormone adenosine. And what adenosine does is it relaxes your brain. So by having coffee block those receptors, um, it helps keep your brain stimulated. Um, it can also help boost dopamine and norepinephrine, so it can be a good mood booster as well. And it also can boost your heart rate and your blood pressure a little bit. So I feel like a lot of us have had, you know, where we drink a little too much coffee and you kind of feel your heart pounding a little bit. So not necessarily a good thing, but that is another way in which it stimulates your body. And in terms of how slash when it affects your body. Um, it can take about 20 minutes for caffeine to kind of enter your bloodstream, do its thing, and it can take about an hour to reach its max potential, I guess. And one study found that at least 90% of US adults consume caffeine daily. So that is the vast majority of us. I actually am in the minority there. Caffeine does not um, agree with my body, unfortunately, but I love the taste of coffee and tea, so every once in a while I will get a decaf just because it tastes good. I never really understood why people drink decaf until I just had to stop drinking caffeine because it was making me crazy, and I was like, oh, I get it now. It just tastes good. Anyways, um, oh, a little fun fact. Um, coffee, I think tea has been around for like ever. Coffee was discovered in the 1800s in Ethiopia and farmers realized that the goats that were eating it had a ton of energy. So they decided to drink it themselves, which I think is really funny and kind of cute. So just a little fun fact in there. So throughout this video, I'm specifically talking about caffeine, not necessarily a specific caffeinated beverage. So I'm not necessarily talking about coffee or about tea or whatever. Um, so just so we're on the same page in terms of how much caffeine is in different things, coffee has 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine per cup. Espresso is gonna be 240 to 720 milligrams. Um, energy drinks are about 50 to 160 milligrams. Tea is anywhere from 40 to 120, and then soda is about 20 to 40 milligrams. So when I'm saying two to three cups or, um, or anything like that, you can kind of get an idea of what that means based on how many milligrams of caffeine are in each of those things there. So let's first talk about the benefits of caffeine. And actually, surprisingly, there are a lot of benefits. Like I said, it can be a mood booster, so it does increase dopamine and norepinephrine, which are both kind of like happy hormones. So I feel like when people say they are in a better mood after they've had their coffee, like that's a real thing. And I think a lot of us have experienced that. Also in terms of mood boosting, not necessarily mood, that's not the best way to put it. But a study found that people who drank two to three cups of coffee or of caffeine per day um, saw a 13% decreased risk of depression, as well as a 45% decreased risk of suicide. So that's kind of crazy that it can have that big of an impact on your mood, your hormones. Um, so that's really, I thought that was really interesting. Another kind of cool benefit of caffeine is it can help boost exercise performance, which when I read that, I was kind of surprised, but when I thought about it, I wasn't that surprised. Um, all these like pre-workout things that people take nowadays, really all it is is caffeine. So, um, 
So I feel like that one's not that surprising, um, but it was proven that it can help. So drinking caffeine, um, I believe it was about an hour before exercise can help boost your performance. It can help increase the use of fat for fuel. So that can be a good thing because it means that your glucose stores are gonna last longer because you are using fat for fuel. It can also increase the time it takes for your muscles to feel fatigued. And it can also decrease the overall perception of exertion. So it can just kind of make you feel less tired, feel less like you're working as hard as you are, I guess. So in terms of like weightlifting and things like that, that could, I guess, be helpful for lifting heavier weights and things of that nature. Um, and it can also improve your endurance. So I guess that kind of goes along with your glucose stores lasting longer, but I thought there were some kind of cool benefits of caffeine. Like I said, I won't be taking pre-workouts anytime soon unless I want to have a mental breakdown during my exercise, but if you want to do that, then go for it. In terms of health, it also has been shown to decrease the risk for heart disease and stroke, and it can also help protect against type 2 diabetes. So people who drank coffee on a regular basis showed a 29% decrease in risk for type 2 diabetes, and then people who drank caffeine, not just coffee, any kind of caffeine, showed a 30% risk in decrease of diabetes. So that's kind of cool. However, people who drank decaf also showed a 12% decrease in risk for diabetes. So that can show that caffeine might not necessarily be um, the only contributing factor to that. So things like coffee and tea both have some really good antioxidants in them, which can also have those protective properties so that it's not only the caffeine that is providing these benefits, if that makes sense. Caffeine can also help protect your liver from cirrhosis, and it can also help protect against liver cancer, which is kind of cool. And another really cool one that I feel like is kind of going with the trends recently is it can help your gut health. So drinking three cups of coffee a day for as little as three weeks has actually been shown to increase the activity of uh, the bacteria in your gut. So that is kind of cool. So I feel like those are some really cool benefits that I didn't really know about. So now let's talk about the negatives of caffeine. So one of the big negatives is that it is addictive. And I think any of us who have gotten addicted to caffeine and then had to stop can definitely vouch for that. You know, once you start drinking it, you really do rely on it. And weaning yourself off of it is not always fun. I know personally, I had a lot of headaches um, weaning myself off, although it probably only took a few days to kind of get rid of that. But that is a negative. Um, anything that's addictive isn't great. It also can increase your blood pressure and heart rate like I talked about um, before. So generally that's not really a problem unless you already have high, high blood pressure or heart disease. Um, if you do, then obviously dropping the amount of caffeine that you're consuming would be a good idea because um, we don't want to increase your blood pressure more. So that's really a temporary thing most of the time unless you are kind of chronically consuming a ton, a ton of caffeine. Um, or unless you already have high blood pressure. Too much caffeine also can cause headaches and migraines. Um, so if you are prone to headaches and migraines and you're drinking a lot of caffeine, that might be something to consider. Um, it can also, I can speak from personal experience, really impact anxiety. That's one of the reasons I stopped drinking caffeine is I found it was just elevating my anxiety like 300%. So personally, that is what was happening to me and why I stopped. I know a lot of people who do have anxiety don't drink caffeine for that reason. And finally, um, I feel like all of us have heard that you shouldn't drink coffee while you're pregnant. And the reason for that is caffeine actually can cross the placenta. So if you are drinking caffeine while you're pregnant, it can actually impact um, the fetus and it can cause things like low birth weight um, 
or you know slow growth so that is a negative if you are pregnant so finally let's talk about the recommendations so in terms of how much you can slash should be drinking per day about two to four cups per day is the recommendation, which ends up being about 400 milligrams um, of caffeine per day. Like I said, source does matter because things like coffee and tea have those other antioxidants that can also have those protective um, effects. So drinking things like tea and coffee is highly recommended over drinking things like soda that really have no health benefit for you. I also will add, you know, some of those energy drinks that are super high in caffeine or that people just like take a shot of and then take another one. Those can be dangerous just based on how much caffeine you're consuming at once. It has been shown to be pretty dangerous um, slash even fatal um, impacts of having uh, 500 milligrams or more at once. Um, that's not to say anyone who has 500 milligrams of caffeine at once is gonna die, but it has happened before. So those like super, super high concentrated energy drinks and shots and things can be dangerous just because you are having so much caffeine at one time. So it's recommended that you not have more than 200 milligrams at a time. So in conclusion, from the research, it seems like caffeine really does have a lot of interesting benefits to our health. Um, it can protect against a lot of different diseases. And part of that also can be the antioxidants from uh, things like coffee and tea. So like I said a couple times, the source of the caffeine really is important. Of course, there are some downsides to drinking too much. And I also will say, which I should have said before, one of the reasons I think that, you know, if you go see a dietitian, they will recommend you reduce your caffeine is because one thing a lot of people tend to do is just kind of drink coffee throughout the day and then they never drink any water. And caffeine really isn't hydrating you in any way. So it's really important that not every drink that you drink is caffeinated. So sure, have a cup of coffee in the morning and the afternoon, but make sure you are drinking water or something hydrating in between because that hydration is super important. And a lot of times people can kind of forget the hydration part because they are drinking something so they just kind of forget to drink other things. So that is another thing to kind of look out for with caffeine is just the fact that you ignore the rest of um, your beverages. So yeah, I definitely uh, don't think caffeine is bad. Of course, just watch the amount that you're drinking, the source, and make sure that you are also drinking something that's going to hydrate you. All right, so I think that is all I have for today. I'm gonna drink the rest of my decaf latte. I hope that you learned something in this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Also follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of what I get up to on a daily basis, what I'm eating. I post lots of food pictures and stuff like that. So I will have my Instagram down below if you want to follow me. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.